Welcome back to Find Your Alpha. On this edition, we're going to be talking about former carousel riders. And I think all of you men know what I'm talking about now. Uh, this term has been used for a number of years in referring to women who have gone out and had relationships with a number of men in their late teens, in their 20s, in their 30s. And now, you know, they're looking to settle and get married uh, to someone and who they normally set their sights on are nice guys, guys who have their acts together, who have jobs, who they wouldn't have looked at before, they wouldn't have even considered, oftentimes treated these guys terribly, let's say in high school or college. But now all of a sudden, since these guys have their acts together, they're high value men, now these carousel riders are looking to get their claws into these guys and get these guys to marry them. And this video is really a cautionary tale of why you do not want to do that. You can you know, be one of the carousel riders that she's riding, but in no way should you be buying the cow when you can get the milk free. So let's get into it. Let's start off with some cold, hard facts right out of the gate. First of all, the FU men movement, and that's the FEM movement. If you don't know what I'm referring to there, from now on I'm gonna ref be referring to it as the FU men movement, encourages women to explore their sexuality and climb the corporate ladder in their 20s. As a result, many of these women have had sex with 15, 20, some over 100 plus men. Most of these men are either bad boys or high value older men who have absolutely no interest other than hooking up with these women. So these women have been pumped and dumped basically uh, throughout their teens and 20s. And then the final bullet point here is after being pumped and dumped repeatedly, they now have their sights set on the prefer proverbial nice guy. These are guys that have their shit together, as I said up front. These same guys they had nothing to do with when they were riding the carousel. Now what happens with a lot of these guys is they think all of a sudden, hey, you know, I've worked hard, I've really bettered myself, I've gotten myself into better shape, and now I've got the trophy wife, basically. You're not getting any trophy here, guys. These women are settling for you, and all they're looking for you to do is give them credence, to give them stability, to give them support, to give them monetary support. They're really not you know, in love with you from a passion standpoint. They may like you, they may even grow to love you more as a father figure or maybe a, a brother figure, but they're not gonna love you like a lover, like they loved all these other guys that they've been pumped by and dumped by in their teens and 20s. So don't be fooled and don't fall for their shit. Some nice guy lessons in action. Do not, I repeat, do not get into any sort of committed relationship with these women. They do not want you. They are settling for you. Who they really pervert, preferred probably was one of these high value men that pumped and dumped them in their 20s. But now these guys obviously didn't want them. They've got choices. They can have a multitude of women. So now these women, they're getting towards the wall, you know, they're either at 30 or they're, you know, maybe have passed 30 and they know that their clock, their biological clock is ticking. So who they look for at that point is a guy who's a sure thing. And they view nice guys as sure things. Hey, I can get this guy. I could just give him some sex and give him something maybe he's never gotten before. And that will lure him in and I will have him, you know, under my control. Don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. They will use their sexuality to lure you into, relate, into a relationship, specifically marriage, then quickly back that down once they've got you. You can listen to all these stories on YouTube and read stories on Reddit 
and these other sites about guys who fell into this trap. These girls did everything for them, you know, prior to them settling down. And then once they got that ring on their finger, they changed like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know, sex was happening once a day. Now, sometimes they're not even getting sex. Oftentimes, because these ladies are out, you know, chasing the uh, Chads and Tyrones and all the guys who pumped and dumped them, they're still, you know, having relationships with some of those guys. Your life will be a living purgatory. Life is too short to go through that kind of crap. You know, you don't want to be dealing with that. You don't want to be dealing with somebody who doesn't desire you, who looks at you as a prize. And these women do not look at these nice guys as, as prizes. They look at these nice guys as guys that they settled for. Again, like I said before, they sometimes look at them as more like father figures or big brother type figures and not as lovers. You never want to have a woman look at you as a father figure or a big brother. You always want the woman to look at you as a lover. Uh, the fourth bullet point here, remember they do not desire you. They want you only for the stability and your resources. The fifth bullet point, many of these rela relationships end up in divorce, often with the women, woman cheating as they cannot pair bond. You know, I said this on previous videos. Once these women have had a multitude of men, they cannot pair bond with one guy. And the final thing to remember here is you cannot reform a 304. Once a woman is a 304, she's always going to be a 304. Don't think you can change her. Don't think, hey, once she gets with me, she's going to be different. Deep down, she's never going to change. So let's get into our story. I married a former carousel rider and quickly came to regret it. I wanted to tell my story to hopefully help other young men avoid a similar situation. I'm a 35 year old male and this all happened to me a little over seven years ago. I fell head over heels in love with the best looking woman from my high school. Let's call her Sheena. Sheena was a cheerleader and the most popular girl in school with a great body, a beautiful face and pretty smile. At the time, I, on the other hand, was an overweight loser by all accounts. As a result, we interacted very little during these years. Sounds very typical. She went off to a private college on a scholarship while I went to the local community college and got a degree in computer sciences. During those years, I also improved my health. I lost weight and put on a good amount of muscle. I started practicing martial arts, playing softball, and volunteering in various community events. I really started changing my life for the better. So it sounds like this guy really got his act together. You know, once he graduated, uh, you know, from school, he really improved his physical health, and also I'm sure his mental health improved a lot. After graduated, I quickly Graduating, I quickly got a job at a locally based private company and steadily moved up into an IT leadership position within five years. So this guy did great. Sheena got a job in phar pharmaceutical sales and changed jobs a number of times with various drug companies. Flash forward to our meeting at a community cleanup volunteer event. Sheena approached me and said, Bruce, is that you? I said yes, and she then said, you look great, and I hear that you're doing awesome in terms of his career. I thanked her for the compliments and asked how she was doing, and she told me about her current position. During the conversation, she revealed that she was unfortunately still single. We went about the day, and at the end of the event, she came back over to me. See, again now, she's got her sights on this guy, this is a guy who she never looked at before, but now all of a sudden he's very attractive because he's successful at his career, he's stable, and she sees, hey, I might be able to, you know, to nab this guy. She came back over to me to say it was really great seeing me. I asked if she had time to grab a drink, and she said, yes, absolutely. So she was all for it. 
We went to a local gastro pub and had drinks and lunch and ended up talking for nearly four hours. See, immediately he was mesmerized by this woman. I'm sure her looks were still fantastic and he's remembering her from high school and he's just drooling. And here he is talking to her for four hours. We parted and I set up a next date for Sunday the next evening. See, he's going diving right in the deep end of the pool. We went to a popular casual, casual restaurant and I picked her up. She, when she appeared, she was dressed in a short mini skirt and low cut top and looked fantastic. So I'm sure she was a woman who looked good on his arm and he was feeling great. I was completely mesmerized and couldn't concentrate on dinner. We had a great dinner and conversation and our sexual tension was obvious. We were both totally turned on with each other. As we left the restaurant, I asked if I could kiss her and she said yes and I did so passionately. Now this is only his second date, which hey, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, uh, going for the sex move here on the second date. Nothing wrong going with it uh, on the first date, but I'm just saying you can see this guy has been hooked already. We got back to her apartment and she boldly said, I'd like you to come in with me. I said, I definitely will. And that was it. That was it. He was done. I was totally hooked from that night forward. Her body looked amazing and she was great in bed. She had me totally wrapped around her finger. Prior to Sheena, I only had sex with two other women. One while I was in college and the next was a girl I dated for about a year before she moved out of state for her job. My friends were all impressed, stating how proud they were that I was hitting that. And you know what hitting that means. They, however, warned me that Sheena was known to have had a long list of lovers in high school, in college, and in the medical community. Remember, she's in pharmaceutical sales. So she's out there calling on all these doctors and doctor's offices. At the time, I told them not to worry, that I was, it was purely physical, a purely physical relationship, but to be honest, I was head over heels in love with this woman from the start. And you can see that. After a month of seeing each other on a daily basis, we mutually entered into an exclusive relationship. That is a big mistake, man. After just 30 days, you don't know anything about her other than what you remember when she was in high school being a cheerleader. And your friends just told her, this woman, you know, just told you this woman has had a long list of lovers, but this guy, again, he's infatuated. My friends again cautioned me, but I said I had it under control and we would not be getting married. I said I wanted the committed relationship to take I wanted the committed relationship to take other men out of the picture and to avoid STDs. So he's basically saying, hey, I want to get into this committed relationship. I know she's had these other lovers, but I'm doing this to get these other men out of the picture and to make sure, you know, that I don't get any STDs. So I take these other men out of the picture. That's the way he's framing it to his friends. As the months went by, I fell deeper and deeper in love with Sheena and she started dropping suggestions of how she wanted to marry me and have my baby. So she's talking his language. I unfortunately let my little head take over and propose marriage to Sheena soon thereafter, but said I'd like to take some time before we got married to see how things would go. She was agreeable and we continued living in separate apartments. Now that was smart, living apart. My friends and family were happy for me, but they again warned me to be careful based on Sheena's history with men. I told them that we were only engaged at this point and I will only get married after we have time to get to know each other fully. I also explained to them that she was a changed woman. See, every guy thinks, hey, I can change her. This guy thinks she's a changed woman with me and was ready to settle down. The word settle is appropriate to use here as eventually I came to realize she settled for me after being pumped and dumped by numerous bad boys and high value men 
in the medical field, i.e. doctors. We stayed engaged for 18 months before I des decided uh, on a date. Oh, he's talking about a date for a wedding. During this time, our relationship was great. Our sex life was excellent. We had fun socializing with friends and family and our careers were going well, mine especially. We both decided we would just have a traditional church wedding and a reception with 40 of our closest friends and family. Prior to our wedding, my best friend and best man, Brian, had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with me. He said that he really liked Sheena and it seemed that she and I were really compatible. However, he wanted me to know he was still very concerned about her promiscuous past and how that may manifest after we tied the knot. He had experience in this as he got married and divorced quickly after college to a popular girl. He, this friend of his, Brian, also married apparently a carousel rider. She was great leading up to the wedding, but once she got him, she immediately changed. Now this is this Brian telling him this. I thank Brian for having the talk with me, but told him I believe things are different this time with Sheena and I. I really believe she loves me and is ready to settle down and build a family and life with me. Brian told me based on his experience with his ex-wife, he had to have this talk with me as he couldn't live with himself if he didn't. I again thanked him for the talk and for being such a great friend to me. We got married in June. Our wedding day was great and the first year of marriage was just like our engagement and we were now living in a condo we recently bought. After about a year of marriage, Sheena started working long hours and going out of town on regional overnight trips for business, something she had, hadn't done before. Now, that's a red flag something she had, hadn't had done before. She also became more distant, more moody, and our sex life diminished from once a day to once a week or once every 10 days. So here's a bunch of red flags that, hey, something's up here with this woman. The excuse she used was that she was just stressed out by the work demands. About 14 months into our relationship, a friend of mine said he needed to speak with me about something and requested we meet in person for a drink. We met at a local bar and he dropped news on me that I did not want to hear. He said he was at a conference last week at a hotel in a city about 75 miles from us. He said, now listen to this, while he was there, he was in a meeting room that overlooked a patio bar area. He said, I don't want to tell you this man, but I've got to. He said he saw Sheena and a local doctor from our city sitting at a table drinking and passionately kissing. He said they left the patio area and headed into the hotel after that. Hearing this absolutely crushed me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. However, my friend is the most honest guy you could ever meet, and he would never make up something like this. I knew it was true. When Sheena came home that night, I asked her how her day went, and she said it was stressful. I then said, how was your conference meeting last week? She said, why do you ask? I said, I was just curious. She said it was fine, but boring. I asked if she sold a lot of product while she was there and she laughed and said, no, of course not. We were just learning. I then asked if Dr. Smith, Smith was one of her instructors. She froze and started stuttering saying, what do you mean? I then said, I understand he gave you some personal instruction on how to sell your product using your body. She said, what are you talking about, Bruce? I told her, Sheena, don't lie to me. I know everything you did and lying is only going to make it worse. She was shell-shocked and started crying. She said, I'm sorry, please forgive me, Bruce. I became enraged with her and told her 
I want you to get out of my house. The house and mortgage were in my name as I bought the house just prior to us getting married and planned on adding her name to the deed after we got married. God, I'm glad I didn't. I bet he is glad that he didn't add her name to the deed because that would make things just so much more complicated. Sheena then said, Bruce, please don't throw away everything we built together. Don't throw away our love. I told her obviously she didn't value me or our relationship and it was over. So this guy's got his alpha and he's handling this as he should. She then said, where am I gonna go? I told her I didn't care where you go, but she needed to get out of my sight as I couldn't stand looking at her. With that, she ran into the bathroom crying hysterically. These women all, it seems like, uh, once they're confronted in their homes, they run into the bathroom crying. It's like two or three stories now I've done like that. I used this time to walk outside and broke down crying like a baby for a good five minutes. Everything my friends and family warned me of had unfortunately come true. I then gathered my composure and called her parents. Her mother wasn't home, but her father answered and I told him what happened. I told him that Sheena was having an affair with Dr. Smith, who happens to be married, by the way. Her father was shocked and disgusted. I told him she may be coming to live with them as she would no longer be staying in my home. When I went back in the house, Sheena was sitting on the couch and again started pleading, pleading saying how sh sorry she was and how much she loved me. She said the sex meant nothing to her. I told her to save it and then told her I called her father and told him what happened and advised him she may be coming to live with them until she settled, she settled things. Sheena said, oh my God, you told my father? I'm so embarrassed. And again, she burst into tears. Sheena's phone rang and she said, oh my God, it's my mother. Dad told her, I'm so embarrassed and ashamed, Bruce. Don't abandon me, I love you, I told her, Sheena. I didn't abandon you, you abandoned us. I said, I want you to leave right now. She said, no, Bruce, I'm not going anywhere. With that, my phone rang and it was Sheena's mother. I answered and she said, Bruce, is it true? Sheena's mother asked him, Bruce, is it true? I told her, unfortunately it was, and that our relationship was over and I would be filing for divorce. With this, Sheena screamed, please, Bruce, no. Please don't abandon me. I'll do anything to keep you and we'll never do anything like this again. I said, Sheena, I need you to leave now. See, this guy is handling this great, man. These are the kind of stories I like to tell because this illustrates how you need to handle a situation like this if anything like this, God forbid, ever happens to you. I told Sheena's mom that it might be best if they came over and picked up Sheena as she is refusing to leave and is no longer welcome in my home. With this, Sheena picked up her purse and ran out the door sobbing, got into her car and drove off. I spent the rest of the night crying my eyes out as my world had been destroyed. Sheena spent the next week calling me, emailing me and messaging me and I didn't respond. I secured a divorce attorney and started the process. After I met with the attorney, I got a call from Sheena and she again started into the diatribe of how sorry she was and begging me. I told her I already started the process of divorce. She begged me to see her one more time. I refused saying that I never want to see her again and hung up. My anger had not dissipated one bit from the time I heard about her infidelity, which I can understand. I would be so pissed. I would never want to see her face again. I debated in my mind whether to tell Dr. Smith's wife and decided it was the right thing to do to inform her. One of my coworkers and good friends is a close personal friend with Dr. Smith's wife. I told her what, what happened and said I'd like to inform Dr. Smith's wife about the situation and ask for her advice. She agreed that it was the right thing to do and called Dr. Smith's wife on my behalf to ask her if it was all right if she gave me her phone number to call her without disclosing what it was about. I knew Dr. Smith's wife, but not personally. So when she answered, she said, hello, Bruce, I was expecting your call. What can I do for you? 
I felt horrible about what I was about to disclose to her, but I said, Mrs. Smith, she said, please call me Debbie. I said, Debbie, I've got some news to share with you and I'm going to be straightforward. She said, okay. And I said, your husband had an affair with my wife. There was silence on the phone and then I could hear her crying. She asked if she could call me back a little later as she needed to compose herself. She called me back and asked if we could meet at a local restaurant for a drink to discuss this matter in detail. I agreed and we met mid-afternoon and I repeated what I told her about with more detail about where and when and advised her that my wife had confessed. I advised that we are separated and I have filed for divorce. She began sobbing and I consoled her. She apologized and I told her that she has nothing to be sorry about. I said, we have two vile spouses that are complete garbage. I told her she could call me whenever if she needed moral support or if additional information was needed. She thanked me and left. A couple weeks later, she asked to meet me again where she told me she confronted her husband and he admitted to the entire affair. She too initiated divorce proceedings and he moved out of their home. Our divorces were final at about the same time. Sheena and I had an amicable, amicable split and she wanted nothing. However, the doctor lost half of his estate as surprisingly, he did not have a prenuptial agreement. Very surprising there. That was all seven years ago. Sheena moved out of town and is still single. I've heard she pines, she still pines for me. Debbie and I remain good friends to this day. She has been in a committed relationship with a guy for the past three years and they plan to marry in the next year. The doctor remarried and no surprise, divorced again due to his infidelity. So in this seven year period, you know, he hooked up with this guy's wife and, you know, broke up his marriage. Then he got married to some other woman and cheated on her. So again, the old saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. I'm happily single and dating women. I don't know if I'll ever settle down and marry again, but I'm keeping my options open. That's the end of my story. And he says here to all the guys, don't repeat my mistakes, gentlemen. So again, it's a good story and it provides a lot of lessons of what can happen if you get involved with one of these women who formerly rode the cock carousel and now is settling for you. Don't do it. Okay, we're gonna sum up here with some nice guy lessons and actions. Do not get into any sort of committed relationship with these women, these former cock carousel riders. They do not want you, they are settling for you. They will use your sexuality or their sexuality to lure you into a relationship specifically marriage, then quickly back down once they've got you. All these things I said right up front, I'm repeating them because I want you to take these away as lessons because it's gonna seem like, oh, this woman loves me. She desires me. She's pushing me for sex. She's giving me things that I never got from anybody else. That's because she wants to entangle you in her web. And once she got you, once she's got you and she's got that ring on her finger, then she's gonna back that right down, like I've said. Your life will be a living purgatory. Remember, remember, they don't desire you. They only want you for the stability and for your resources. And also remember that many of these relationships end up in divorce. These are the, the marriages that are causing divorce rate now in the United States to be above 60% or in the range of 60% now, I think it's 55 to 60%. These are these relationships where women settle and they're never happy. You know, they like the stability, they like the protection that they have of this nice guy, but they don't desire this man and often they end up cheating on this man. So don't, fall victim to one of these former carousel riders. And I sum it up here by saying you cannot reform a 304. So I wanna thank everyone for watching and listening this week. If you like this video, please share it. 
Uh, please subscribe to the channel too. We're trying to build up this channel and build up our community. And if you have comments, leave them. How did this guy handle this situation? Let me know how you think he handled it. Have you encountered a situation like this and how did you handle it? And that's it for this week. And I'll talk to you on the next video.